Hello, this is Bill Worrell with Virginia Cooperative Extension. Today's episode of 15 Minutes in the Forest, we're going to learn about the least weasel, the smallest carnivore in Virginia. Hi, my name is Kevin Hammett. I'm a collegiate associate professor in the Department of Fish and Wildlife Conservation at Virginia Tech. And today I'm going to talk to you about our project we have with least weasels in the state of Virginia. Now, the great thing about least weasels is they are the world's smallest carnivore. In fact, someone recently wrote a book about them and described them as mouse traps with jaws. And, you know, landowners sometimes will have a negative thought about weasels. Uh, you can even go back and look at cartoons and things, and often, oftentimes weasels are depicted as the villains. And I'm sure there are some species, such as long-tailed weasels, that sometimes can cause a problem. The great thing about least weasels to a landowner, though, is there a huge benefit in the amount of pests they're consuming. They, again, are carnivores, so they're eating things like mice, voles that might be damaging uh, newly planted trees or crops. They'll even take uh, small snakes and, and other reptiles. So they're incredible predators on the landscape. The challenge that we have in the state of Virginia is they're rarely observed. And actually that's the case throughout the country. This animal not only is found in the United States, but it's found in many European countries and even a few African nations as well. And throughout their range, you normally don't see them. Part of the reason is they're very small typically only about six to seven inches in length, and they move extremely quick throughout the landscape. Now, again, we go back to the idea of least weasels being such a benefit to the landowner. They have to consume at least their body weight a day. In fact, in cold weather, that might jump up to one and a half to maybe even two times their body weight a day. So they're consuming several mice or several voles each day on your property. So that's a good reason to want to have them. So one of the ways that you can help us though with our project is more than half of all records that we found in the state of Virginia have come from landowners just as yourself reporting cat or dog kills to us. The most common way that a landowner will find a least weasel is their cat would happen to kill one and bring it to them. This is actually a specimen that I have that was uh, a landowner in Washington County, Virginia contacted us and said, hey, that their, you know, their cat had killed something very unusual, and it turned out to be a least weasel. So this is the least weasel. This is actually a full-grown least weasel. So you can see it easily fits in the palm of my hand. But what you might notice is, in a typical weasel fashion, that it's got a very long and, and kind of narrowly shaped head. And the beauty of that is it allows them to stick their head into very small holes and look for things like the mice, look for things like voles or other potential food sources. So the best benefit, the way you can really help us and help our knowledge about these animals, and then in turn maybe learn more about your own land and, and how these animals can help you by consuming pests, is to let us know if you find um, a, a specimen like this that a dog or a cat, again, typically is the cats have killed. We also have cases where people might have barn owls on their property, for instance. And one of the things we'll see is sometimes people will find a least weasel skull in a barn owl pellet. Uh, this is one that actually, though, came from a cat kill. And you can notice, notice the teeth on that, and you can see the, the classification as being a, a mouse trap with teeth uh, makes sense there. Again, they're pretty ferocious animals, the smallest carnivore that we have in the world. What we hope to do is we hope to be able to learn a lot more about this animal and how we can manage for it in the state of Virginia by having folks just as yourself report these specimens to us. Of particular concern to us is we want to know the best way we can manage habitat. What are their preferences? Do they want to be an edge habitat? Are they more of a forest dweller? Do they basically just move around to wherever their prey items might be? So that's a great goal. We also want to learn more about their general ecology. How long are they living? How many young do they typically have? A lot of this information is known, but it came from Europe. And in the United States, it's come from more northern states. Very little information is known in the state of Virginia, and this is where you can help us out. So again, if you would happen to find a specimen, please feel free to, free to report that to us. So my name is Austin Holloway and I'm a senior in the Virginia Tech Fish and Wildlife Department uh, majoring in wildlife conservation with a minor in forestry and today we're out here we're going to talk about the Mostella trapping system that we use to monitor for least weasels on Virginia Tech property here in Montgomery County. 
If you look around here, as you can see behind me, we're on the edge of an agricultural field out here that many landowners in Virginia have with a little riparian zone over to your left that you see over that way with kind of some thick early successional stuff along the creek bank. But we mainly try to focus in on these edges that these fence rows that we have coming off this agricultural fields that are a little overgrown on the backside come into play for this least weasel. They use them to run run the edge looking for habitat, looking for prey such as uh, moles and voles that like to be in these edges and even occasionally you might get an eastern cottontail in there that least weasels do tend to prey on. We go out and look for trails and stuff that these animals would be using and when we're looking for trails we're looking for little bitty things that are in pathways and stuff in the grass that you just see occasional rabbits and stuff running in and that's where we go and place our boxes and just kind of hope that we catch the least weasel running its path to come into the box out of natural curiosity which we will show you in just a minute so if you come in here real quick i can give you a brief overview of what our boxes look like and kind of where we place them as you can tell this box is about two foot long by a foot wide closed off on one end back here and the other end has a pipe running through it the pipe's about 16 inches long and uh just open-ended on both ends so the animal can run in and out of the box at its own free will if you open up our box and look we do put latches on them to keep predators such as bears or anything out that want to come and mess with the box we do cut a window in our pipe so when the animal comes through for example run through like that stick right there it triggers the trail camera to turn on and the trail camera picks up we do use Reconyx trail cameras, but you can use Bushnell, Browning, or Moultrie trail cameras to monitor for these animals. And we just have little brackets back here holding the camera in place so it's not bumped around by an animal that gets inside the box. Again, the animal comes and goes at its own free will. We do not bait our boxes. It's completely dependent on the curiosity of the least weasel to come in and out of the box. The least weasel is the smallest carnivore in North America and does go in mole and vole holes similar to the pipe here to look for prey all the time and that's one thing that we play off of not having to bait any of our boxes. Another thing that I want to touch on is um, it's not just fence rows that create those linear habitat features we're talking about that we see these animals like to use. It can be as simple as a fallen down log or a tree that's overturned in a pasture or just one that you've put out there in a wood pile out in your field. Um, these logs tend to create micro habitat features what we call them and they're basically creating an edge in the middle of an open field. As you can see here we place our box up under this and this acts as an edge just as the fence row does and we do get some of our records from falling down logs of the weasel going in looking around in that area trying to find prey because this creates cover not only for the weasel from birds of prey but also cover for other small mammals such as the moles and voles that the weasel is going after. So maybe your your cat has brought you uh, a, a weasel and you're curious if it's a least weasel or not. A couple things that might help you in identification. One is going to be the size. Uh, we also in the state of Virginia have long tail weasels and mink and as an adult, they're much larger than this, uh, than this least weasel. The least weasel is going to have uh, white with just sometimes slightly creamy color underneath. Um, and you'll notice it's just barely got a little tiny dark tip on the end of its tail. The long tail weasel is going to have a much, uh, much more pronounced dark tip on its tail. The other thing to do is if you are fortunate enough to, to maybe find one of these and you're willing to help out with our, with our work, all we would ask you to do is, is take the specimen and literally just wrap it in a, in a paper towel. Um, you might maybe want to wear a glove and you know, that's fine. And then once you have it uh, wrapped in the towel, if you would just place it in a Ziploc bag for us. Uh, if you want to write your name or anything like that on the Ziploc bag, that would be great. And then the information that we're providing for my contact information, please let me know as soon as possible. If you're comfortable, the animal uh, really needs to be uh, frozen in order to keep it from breaking down until we can obtain it. So if you're comfortable wrapping it in the paper towel, putting it in uh, a Ziploc bag and in your freezer, and then please reach out to us and we will make sure and get that specimen from you very quickly. Again, this is really important information for our project and we appreciate landowners such as yourself helping us out with it. I want to thank you for joining me for today's episode of 15 Minutes in the Forest. 